I'm just going to grab my screen to share it with you. Um, is everybody able to see that screen? Yep. I think we're good. Okay. So again, um, welcome everybody. Um, and for you guys returning, welcome back um, to sporting. Um, <clears throat> give me one second here. There we go. Um, the team manager handbook. So we're going to talk about a lot of things in this meeting this evening. Um, but if you forget anything or you need um, a place to reference, we do have the team manager treasurer handbook that resides on our website. So this link is here in this uh, presentation. Um, this presentation uh, will be online. So we will have our director of communications put this online within the next couple of days. Um, so that way you guys can go back out and access it. And we'll probably put a link in Plymetrics um, so that you'll be able to find it um, easy. Um, I do have a checklist developed, which I'll send out to everybody. And we'll kind of glance at that in a little while um, so that you guys know step-by-step step, the kind of things that you're going to be responsible for and what comes next um, down the line here. So that's just a place of reference. There's a coach's handbook out there as well. So if it's um, questions about um, coaches and uh, let's just say like stipends when you're traveling, things of that nature, um, you'll find that information within this uh, resource as well. Um, a couple of things on what's new. <clears throat> What's new um, this year, Playmetrics registration, um, just to touch on each topic, we are now um, using Playmetrics entirely for all of our registration for the season, for competitive, for recreational, for academy. Um, anybody that registers within our club will go through Playmetrics. We also use uh, the Playmetrics platform for all of our camps, TPD sessions, um, Futsal leagues, I think, is going to be coming next. So we try to have a one point place where all of you guys go, where you register for everything. So it was an easy decision based off of the troubles that we um, encountered with Demosphere and the things that were promised that were not there. Um, it was a real simple switch to get over to Playmetrics. So hopefully everybody had a, an easy time getting registered. Um, their platform is very easy to use. So um, that's where we're at with Playmetrics. And for you guys that are new, that is our communication tool that we use as well. Um, so we use that for communicating to the teams, to the coaches, to the team managers. Anything that we do, communication goes through there. Any payments that we have now for registration um, all goes through Playmetrics. Everything is just in one platform. The Sports Connect and Stack Sports. This is the new registration platform that our state association has chosen to go to after, again, uh, releasing from Demosphere. Sports Connect is something that we used in the past, but we um, opted to use Playmetrics. Stack Sports is the piece that they will be using for the referees um, and league. So you'll be getting more information that will come out from the league on using these, these items here with Sports Connect and Stack Sports. But what I can tell you briefly for those of you guys who are returning, it's going to be like uh, when we used Affinity in the past, you'll be able to log into your team page out there. You'll be able to club pass your players. You'll be able to add them, delete them, print your rosters, print your game day uh, rosters, set, you know, set your rosters, all that stuff like we did in the past is going to be back. So all those features will be back and there will be no longer be the need for you guys to email me or call me every time you guys need to make a change. So that's uh, a great benefit for you guys, especially so that last minute changes can be done by the team managers and the coaches. Pre-academy and academy uniforms. Um, if we have some pre-academy and academy team managers on, there was a change. So um, basically most of the families know this, they will be sizing at our uniform sizing events, the blue custom Jersey, and then they will be purchasing the rest of their items. <clears throat> well, let me step back there. They're going to be sizing for that blue custom jersey and they're going to order that through the soccer master link through adidas just as we would have in the past the other pieces for the white shirt the navy shorts the navy sock that will all be purchased through soccer international so the remainder of the kits purchased there um, starting next year in uh, the season 23 
24, we will go completely to Soccer International for our pre-academy and academy uniforms. So we're going to um, take those uniforms back, um, bring them into shop local, and save uh, the families uh, a tremendous chunk in costs there. So things that we're looking to do where we can cut your costs, that's one, one avenue that we found and we are going to push forward with next season full in um, getting that cost down for those kids. And then making sure that they're uniform across the program, pre-academy, academy, um, so everybody matches. So that's a little bit about what's new. <clears throat> for th those of you guys that are new to us, we use Playmetrics, as I said, for our communication um, across the club. So you, once your coach had informed me that you were going to graciously step up and help out with the team, um, I then inputted you into our Playmetrics platform and added you to your team. So some of you may not see your team right now. It may be blocked out, and that's just because some of the older teams um, are not visible currently. So they'll become visible probably at some point at the end of the week um, once we get through the last round of team formation. So anything that you, cancellations, um, announcements, field closers, practice schedules, game schedules, uh, player evaluations, all that stuff is gonna run through play metrics. So if a field gets closed, it will be closed through play metrics. We'll close a field you'll get a notification. So will the coach and all the players on the team that the field is, is closed. Now that doesn't mean that your coach won't ask you to find a space inside or at another avenue. Um, in that case, you would just go in and modify that and update it with the current information uh, for your training practice or if game schedules change, you can edit it in there. If you're putting in tournament schedules, it goes in through play metrics, um, all that fun stuff. And we'll kind of try to walk through that here in a second for those of you that are new. There's some links below, and again, this will be on the website that you can go to and just see a tutorial walkthrough. They're very helpful. So if you um, don't know <clears throat> or remember how to get to a certain thing, um, these are very handy to have with you. Risk management. Risk management is going to be new. Um, we are still going to use players' health through our state association. However, we are no longer using Demosphere. So all of our club staff will get pushed into our station and they will then uh, send that push out to you guys. So check your emails because you'll be getting emails to complete your information. So we no longer um, have the control where you go into signing into your Demosphere account and doing all that stuff. Things will be different. So the player's health information will come from them. Uh, just give it a little bit of time. We'll be working on that this week. We have a new office uh, staff member. He is a um, office administrator. Um, his name is Aaron Blakeston. So he is going to take on this responsibility. Um, so contact information will be coming along um, in this slide here shortly. And he will be sending along all the information that you'll need. Um, really briefly for those of you returning, you can go back out to safesport.org and sign in and up your safe sport certification. Um, the concussion certification, you'll have to wait until they send it out because it's hard to find, trust me. And then for our background checks, background checks are going to be every two years now. So if you've done a background check last season, you're good to go until next season. For anybody that's new coming into the club and signing up, you will have to do a background check. And as I said, we'll get more information on that um, within the coming week. Um, just briefly, we do have a stop it program. So we do have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we do have uh, backing behind um, all forms of racism, prejudice, discrimination, sexism, and bullying on and off the playing field. So um, just to keep this and bring it to your attention, this is out on our website. Um, you can find it there. If you witness anything, if you see it, um, there's information on who to contact, who to call. If you can't find it and you absolutely just remember this, you can always call the office and we can get it pushed to the appropriate uh, people. Team accounts. So this is going to be, you guys, we have registration fees for players to sign up. And then we have fees for teams. So team fees and team fees account for um, tournaments. They account for 
extra training sessions that aren't your registration. Um, they would account for any events that happen outside of that. Let's say it was state cup regionals, um, college IDs, all kinds of other things go through your team fees. So with that said, uh, a meeting with your team manager or your team manager, you'll be your team manager will be meeting with your coach. Um, and you guys will have your first team meeting gathering and talk about all the information in regards to which tournaments the coach is choosing, um, you know, what, what amounts the coach feels that is going to be required from each person based on the events they're attending. So you as a team manager will go out and set up account through the bank. There's information here. Um, it's going to be set up as a sole proprietorship. So not just going in and say, hey, I want to open up an account uh, for a team. You're going to be opening a sole proprietorship account. Now, I'll tell you that um, no EIN number is needed. I see you, Jason. I got to get back to let you in here. Give me one second. I have lost my mouse. Oh, you know what? Hold on one moment. We're going to... Okay. Welcome back, Jason. <laughs> okay, so going back to this, there will be no EIN number that will be needed. Um, so just make sure you know that. Um, all team managers, you will sign an agreement with us. Um, I will send that out to all team managers in the next week. Um, all it basically says is that you um, are aware that you are maintaining an account. And if you were to withdraw from your team manager duties, if you moved, if you just decided you were leaving the club, whatever it may be, you just have a responsibility to get all team documents and team belongings passed on to the new manager, or you bring it to the office and we will pass that information along. So um, just making you aware of that. And then again, on this topic, I will have more information coming out soon. Um, we used to use Great Western Bank. We officially transferred over to First Interstate Bank uh, June 1st, I believe was the date. So there's a lot of information changing. So I will get you guys updated with the most current um, processes to follow when setting up an account for those of you that are new. Um, and if you have any questions, please give me a call at the office or just email me um, and we'll work through it. But like I said, we'll get more information coming shortly. Um, again, as I said, team fees, um, <clears throat> along with team fees comes another uh, issue where you may have a parent that falls behind um, you may lose contact with them. They're not getting back to you. Um, they're behind in their team fees. You know, maybe as a team manager, you can offer to have August, September, and October. And if you had a team fee of $200, you could choose to split that $200 by those three months and make them pay um, that amount per month. So in August, they would have a payment. Um, in sep September, they would have a payment. In November, they would have a payment. So you can divide that out. If they get behind, I don't want you to wait too long. And I also don't want you to take on the responsibility of being the collector because that's not your job. So make sure that if anybody starts falling behind, you're not hearing for them, they seem to have disappeared, um, forward that to me, give me a call at the office. Basically send me an email and let me know how much they owe when it was due, what it was for, um, so that I can get a hold of that person and get in contact and get that fee collected to you. So don't let it fall behind. Um, I, you know, I've heard of people oh, two months months. behind and then they're calling us. So make sure you deal okay, with it. Let's time. Yeah. Um, somebody out there needs to mute, please. Um, high school age players, U15 through 19, we need to ensure that all team fees are paid prior to the end of season. So we need to make sure that they are paid up because high school players obviously get done. They go off to play high school. So they're basically done unless they're coming back to play in uh, state cup or regionals um, with their teams or any other post high school season events. So make sure that everything is paid. If they're attending a state cup, president's cup, regionals, whatever it may be, we need to make sure that um, they are current 
and paid up um, on all fees. Um, a reminder to team managers, you can remind your coaches of this as well. I do remind them in their meetings. Reschedules, forfeits, and cancellations in NYSL, which is the league that most of these teams play in, there'll be some exception for ECNL, ECNL RL, and MPL. Um, these, these fees are the responsibility of the team. So if your team cancels a game, if your team reschedules a game, um, one reschedule is covered through the club and only one. After the first one, it's the responsibility of your team. So your first one's $50. The next one is usually about $100. So make sure that you're accounting for this in your team budget because it will come to you and they will be billing individually this year. So we will not get a season ending reconciliation um, or reconcile invoice this time as soon as you do the reschedule the forfeit cancellation whatever it is it'll be coming out um, in the next day or two so you will be seeing that um, so i just want to make sure that everybody is aware of that that it will be the responsibility of those teams um, when it comes to making game changes um, with this the league that we run in it's all self-scheduled so whether whether uh, reschedules are always allowed to be changed so you're never going to get charged for those it's going to be when you, your coach chooses to cancel the game um, for whatever reason it may be. So I just want you guys to be aware of that. Make sure you read those rules when they do come out so that you know the time frames of when you can cancel and when it's too late to cancel. Because if it's too late within like two days, 72 hours, maybe it's 72, three, um, they will charge you referee fees as well as uh, game fees for the field. So just be aware of that. Player passes, headshots only. Um, most of that's controlled through us with play metrics. So hopefully most of these people have done what we asked them to do. Every once in a while, you're gonna get somebody that submits a Snapchat filter or last year's Christmas photo, um, unwrapping a present, who knows what it is. Um, just make sure that it is them, their face, not turn to the side, not turn backwards, not 100 feet away. Um, and we got to zoom in on the picture that comes in blurry. So just make sure that they're getting that done. If, if we ask you um, if a photo is missing, we may ask you to find it. You may ask, have to find it depending on the league that you guys play in, um, if there's not one there, but we should be good to go on this. Um, on here, touching with USYS. So USYS player passes are going to be for teams that are playing in NYSL. All of those teams will be issued a set. So you will get that set. Please take the set. Um, you'll go get them laminated. You put them on a little ring and then you can store them um, in a binder would be my suggestion. So keep them, do not throw them away. They will be good for fall and spring. I always get team managers that will hit me up in January, February, March. Hey, are these passes still good because I got rid of them or do we keep, do we get new passes? You don't get new passes. The only time you're going to get a new pass is if you get a new player. So if you get a new player to your team, you're going to get a new pass for that particular player and your, your roster will update, but you will be able to print off your roster. So those kind of things, um, some of it's a thing of the past where we did things uh, previously, um, having to go through the office and thus forth. So I just want you to know, keep your passes, don't destroy them. Um, you're going to need them. If you're an ECNL, NPL, you will be issued U.S. club passes as well. So those U.S. club passes will be able to be used for your ECNL, NPL games in those particular leagues and for any events that will allow you to use U.S. club. When you come over to State Cup, regionals, then you're going back to USYS. So um, you'll have a couple of sets of passes. Birth certificates, the only thing you guys really need to know on here because we collect those through play metrics. Um, sometimes people slip through because they upload a photo. Um, some, of, some of our members know how to bypass the system. Um, because we changed platforms, we had to reload birth certificates. If you have a, a family that tells you that, you know, they had one last year and they can't find it, have them give me a call and we'll see if we can pull it out of the old system. Um, we weren't able to transfer them all over, unfortunately, into the Playmetrics system. So everyone had to reload their certificate. But within Playmetrics, once that's done, we will be good to go and there won't be a need for it. 
Um, when you come to teams that are uh, participating in state cup regional action, um, that's going to be your ECNL teams as well, NPL, 13 and up. Those would be the U13 and up. So let's clarify that, U13 through U19. You will need to have copies of birth certificates at times um, with you if it's required. Also, when you go registering for state cup, president's cup, regionals, moving on, um, you need to make sure that uh, their birth certificate matches their name that's in um, play metrics. So we ask people to upload your legal, your player's legal first name and last name, middle name, so that it matches the birth certificate. Because if it's off, um, the state will reject that and they'll throw it back and that player won't be added until it gets done. So just a tidbit for those coaches that, or those coaches, those team managers that are in those higher level teams. For you guys, U11, U12, Academy, you don't need to worry about this. Medical release forms. Medical release forms are used for tournament events uh, for the most part. Uh, they will be used State Cup, President's Cup. Those events are kind of in that bracket. So all of these um, types of events use these medical release forms. Every player that registered in Play Metrics um, through our competitive programs and academy we're required to complete a medical release form. So they should have copies of that. If they don't, they can go find it out on the website, um, Nebraska State Soccer. They'll be able to go out there and find the medical release form, complete it, and then you as a team manager will collect it, store it in your team binder, and keep it with you um, for, for the season. So you, you will need it for multiple things. If you have to give copies of medical releases, which Usually they keep them in a binder and they do not take them. Um, you really shouldn't have to make copies, but if you do and you need it, make copies of them so that you're not, you know, stuck in December, January, and you're like, hey, I don't have a medical release form. The only time you're going to need another one is if you get, we do have players that move up, um, move up, move down, new players uh, to the club, then you'll have to get one from them. So if you have an issue with it, give us a call, let us know. Um, U.S. club people, so ECNL team, ECNL and MPL teams, I keep forgetting the RL, um, those teams will all need a U.S. club medical release pass as well, so they'll have both because most of those teams are playing in USYS in addition to their other leagues, so they will have a copy of each. Um, this slide is just kind of showing you when you go out to the the website before when I said Nebraska State Soccer, you can see where the medical release form is at. U.S. Club Soccer Registration, this is for the ECNL, ECNL RL, and NPL teams. So these players have to go about things a different way um, and disregard the demosphere. I guess I forgot to take that out. There's always one thing I, I miss when I go through this. Um, so um, Aaron Blakeston, who I said is our new office assistant, he will be um, inputting people into U.S. Club, going through every player. They also have to provide a photo, which I believe we can pull out of play metrics, um, and proof of birth. So that's the birth certificate. So all of this information also goes to U.S. Club. Um, and this is what I said when it comes to teams that are in these particular leagues, then we have to go the U.S. Club route as well. So Aaron will be making contact with most of you guys who are involved in those leagues um, at some point next week um, to get started on that process. Uh, uniforms, only the new families to our club will have to go in and order their uniforms for the season. We run a two year cycle and we are in year two of that cycle right now. So the only people that have to go out if they're members currently is possibly if they moved up um, maybe they played at U12 last year and they played on an elite team and this year they made the U13 ECNL team. Then um, in that particular situation, as long as the numbering sequences are good with that coach, you would have to check with your coach, then they simply would have to go get some patches um, adhered to their, to their jersey um, to be compliant with those leagues. So even those particular players don't have to purchase a new uniform. If families lost an item, if a kid grew, um, then you can send them the link and we'll talk about that in a second uh, for them to go out and order those units. 
Um, anybody new will go out and order a complete kit. So they'll be ordering two jerseys, two shorts, two socks, uh, a third alternate long sleeve jersey, and a jacket. Those are all required items in the kit uh, for the competitive side. The only um, exception is academy. I just talked about that earlier. Um, the academy, pre-academy players will only be ordering the Blue Navy custom uh, jersey from the Soccer Master Link. These families will get these orders delivered directly to them and pay for them. So there's nothing that you have to do outside of sending um, the uniform link, which we will be working on next week. Uh, jersey numbers, this is just kind of an overview of the jersey numbers that how we work. Top teams, uh, you know, what their number sequence are, second teams, third teams, and any additional teams after that. So this is just kind of the numbering sequence. Um, your coaches are pretty um, in tune to this. So again, this is kind of FYI for you, just in case you're working with the coach to assign a number or a player is moving up and you're trying to see if that number will fit um, within his group or her group. Training kits, training kits are all purchased at Soccer International and they're for U11 and older teams, um, as well as our academy and pre-academy. So all of those guys go and purchase that at Soccer International. They get a gray dry fit shirt, black short, and a pair of black socks, which is approximately $36. So information for your families. Um, Soccer Master will be at the Omaha Sports Complex on Wednesday during our tryout uh, tryouts from, I believe it's four to eight. So if anybody wants to come and get training kits, then they can stop out um, to the tryouts and run in and pick them up from Soccer International. Leagues, um, leagues uh, for those of you guys that are coming back, um, for those of you guys that are, guys that are new, um, leagues are incorporated into our registration fees now. So there is no, if you, you know, if your league was more than the cost that we provide, you had to pay money. So everything's included. The only um, exception is if your team is, let's just say U11 Boys Elite, if that U11 Boys Elite plays in league as a U11 age group, and then they play in a U12 age group because they're going to play up in a league as well, both of them in the fall, then you would owe for the additional league. So we pay for one league, um, any team, and there's a couple teams that do. Um, and if that's the case, then make sure that you're budgeting for that second league um, in your team fees. Outside of that, the majority of you guys, 99.9% .9 will only be you know, watching your team go off to one league and you'll never even worry about it. Um, Nebraska <clears throat> Youth Soccer League, this is NYSL. Um, registration opens July 1st. So unless you're an academy team, which I think even the academy coaches will be registering their teams on this season. I used to do that in the past. Um, we'll work that out with the academy here in the next couple of weeks, but um, registration opens July 1st. Every team for the most part, unless there's an exception, plays in NYSL. So make sure you get with your coach and have a conversation and make sure you know who's registering. A lot of coaches put that responsibility on the team manager. If you have questions when it comes to registration, please let us know. You can email or call the office. There's three of us in there every day. So one of us can answer your questions. Um, to help you out. But the registration, again, opens July 1st. The deadline to register your team is July 18th. Um, don't worry about missing your team because I do run a check um, on one day before and on the deadline date to see who's missing. And I will contact you to let you know, hey, you need to get your team registered. Blue Conference, that's level one and two. Um, they will have self-scheduling meetings July 30th and 31st. This is pretty much for your coach, unless they ask you to assist them. Um, if they're out of town, there are some team managers that help out their coach a lot and they do attend these meetings. So this is where they sit down and schedule out their games. So there is no need for blackout dates um, any longer. Red conference, that's level three. Um, that would be maybe be some of our um, third level, fourth level teams if we have those there, that would be in a red conference schedule. Um, those meetings are the 13th and the 14th. Um, our schedules for league are scheduled to be released for level one and two, August 8th, and level three, August 25th. Most of you guys are going to be in level one and two blue conference, so that's kind of the information you want to pay attention to. 
Um, your coach will be able to inform you on that if it's different. The dates of play for level one and two, August 20th through November 13th is your season. Level three, September 6th through November 6th is your season. So good information here. Again, this will be coming to you from the league as well. So you'll get a copy of that. Tournaments, um, this is you're getting with your coach to talk about the tournaments that you're gonna attend. You're probably gonna attend um, our Cornhusker Classic in September. And then you're probably gonna attend another event this fall, most likely in Kansas City um, would be my guess. Not everyone. Um, some of you guys will stay local for both. So uh, make sure you get with your coach. You can go out to the tournament center, which is through Nebraska State Soccer on their website. You'll find the tournament center. Um, you'll be able to log in. If you haven't done this before, you'll create a login and then log in. This is where you'll go um, for your travel forms. If you're traveling outside of the state of Nebraska, that includes Council Bluffs, you do have to have a travel form. Unless you're an ECNL, NPL, ECNL, RL team that has US club, they do not need to get a form, but everyone else would need a travel form to leave the state. Um, Alliance for All, I wouldn't pay too much attention to that because I don't even know if they're doing that anymore. Um, a lot of this stuff we do have in Play Metrics under the Resources tab. So if you get lost, go out to the Resources in Play Metrics when you're logged in as your team manager, and you can find a lot of information that I just covered um, this evening out there. Um, be sure to inform me or Aaron if you talk with your coach and he decides that he's going to turn an early, attend an early event, which means he's probably going to attend a tournament August, um, I think the 5th and 6th, 7th is a weekend. Um, if they're going to attend something really early, you have to let us know because we have to be able to get their roster and passes ready um, and to you guys prior to that event happening. So um, a lot of times they're registering these teams a week ahead of time. So that's pushing us till the end of July to get you guys ready. So just let us know if that's what your coach intends to do. <clears throat> um, one other thing, when you're signing up for a tournament, a lot of people will call me and ask me, hey, can I use um, my USY pa USYS passes? Should I use my US club passes? Um, another question would be, uh, we wanna take three players with us. How do we do this? Read the instructions, um, the registration uh, rules in the tournament so that you know exactly what you can do. Most tournaments will allow for anywhere from three to five club pass players, or not club pass players, my bad, guest players. So a guest player is somebody who is going to join your team who's not part of your team for a tournament or an event outside of league play games. And in that, in that case, you can have so many per team, and it has to be within your roster limits as well. So however many that is, um, for an 11 v 11 team, it's 22 players, but tournaments usually only allow you to take either anywhere from 18 to 20 players for the majority of tournaments. Um, guest player forms do come off of that tournament center website as, along with the travel permit. So that's somewhere you need to log in and you have to uh, fill out the player's information there. You will need to have team ID numbers and coaches numbers and coaches emails. So there may be a time that you need to call me and say, hey, can you give me the information for this coach and this team um, within our club? So a little bit there. Um, this is just kind of a brief. I'm at the Nebraska State Soccer website. I'm under the events. And if you see down at the bottom of the page, it says the tournament center. If I clicked on that, I would be brought to this page and at this point, I could log in if I needed to. Once I log in at the sign in at the top, I'll get another screen that'll say travel permit, guest players, um, those kind of things at the top. Right here, it says find a sanctioned tournament. So I could click on that and I could go in and find the tournament. If your uh, coach is asking you to go register for the Cornhusker Classic, um, the Nebraska Shootout, which is in um, later in May, if he asked you to do that, you could find it on the tournament center and you could begin the registration process for your team. Um, this is just getting with your coach, looking at this again, make sure you get the dates and stuff set for your family so they know what they're attending and they know, you know the costs and they know what they're paying um, for the season. Um, this is just basically an overview for the field. So practice etiquette, um, when you're at Chowkul, be sure um, that you're dropping off and picking up players at the appropriate places, um, not across the street from the fields. 
we're trying to keep the safety of our kids here. And there's too many people that drop people in right in front of the fields and are walking across um, the street to get to the fields and there's cars coming back and forth, you know, both ways. So we want everybody to be safe. So just adhere to the rules that are out there. Um, same is true for Miller Star. Um, that complex is kind of changing a little bit with the city doing some stuff. So if this diagram is not quite right, um, just go with the rules that they have out there in place. Same thing. Make sure that the, I know that some of you guys have older kids. Just make sure to tell them to drive slow. Academy practices out at Miller Star, and we don't ever want anyone to get injured or hurt. Um, some information here. Um, I'm going to kind of briefly touch on it. If you guys have in-depth questions on this, feel free to call me. I'm at the office and I'll be happy to explain it to you because um, the travel policy can get tricky for new team managers coming in and you got a coach telling you one thing and you don't do because you may have read this or you may have forgotten or you're not just quite sure, then give me a call so that you can be 100% sure um, that everything's happening the way that it should be. Most of our coaches are pretty good about this. Every once in a while, something can go awry. So um it's basically just going to tell you when and how things are covered when they can get a rental car when they cannot so all the stuff is just kind of here um there's going to be specifics i know at times so like i said just give me a call um anytime a coach is traveling that fee gets passed on to the team so they wind up um splitting the cost for the hotel for any type of rental car if it's an airline flight whatever it may be and then there's food stipends. Um, if it's a drivable event, when it when it uh, comes to mileage, we do have the rules on there of that mileage, how much they're getting paid, um, how far of the distance that that is allowed, um, and all of those things. Um, so, like I said, this is something that you'll be able to read over um, when you have it, and then just like I said, give me give me a call if you've got questions. It's pretty cut and straightforward and easy to follow. But like I said, you will get questions. Um, <clears throat> if anybody asks about, you know, a lot of times we get, hey, can I get um, reimbursement or a refund? The only time we give uh, refunds or, and uh, any kind of reimbursement um, is in the event of a season ending injury or illness. If anything else has happened, um, that we'll look at it, but it's not something that usually happens. So just make sure that you just direct them to the website and go look at our um, our uh, injury reporting policy. It's all out there um, on our website. So <clears throat> just a briefing. The one thing I do want to make a point of is if you get an injury on your team and coaches, they're good about it, but they're not 100% on it. A lot of times injuries just don't get reported to us. I do keep track of every injury of players in our club. Um, so I do need to know when this happens so if you're out there at a game and you know jill's out there and she breaks her leg uh, you know sometimes the coach just forgets to tell us this well i have to know that jill broke her leg because now i have to look at that family and say okay what happened um breaking a leg it's usually a time frame if it's something more serious which we've had a lot of those at times that it's going to take months to get back to maybe they're not going to get back to soccer until next fall um, those are things that I really need to know because um, there's a lot of things um, that we have to do with those players. So if you see something, just you know, shoot me an email. Hey, by the way, if coach didn't say anything, this is what happened. Um, not tattling or anything. It's just we want to make sure we know of every player that has been injured or hurt out on the field. Um, roster limits, uh, pretty simple. U11 through U12, 18 players. 13 to 18, 22 players. So that's how many players you can have on your roster at any given time. Um, so <clears throat> that does include primary and secondary players. Um, they combine together to make those totals. Club passing players are just players that you're going to use from another team within our organization for a specific game. Um, so that's not uh, necessarily part of this. Um, club passing, they will allow you to have so many, you can still have so many uh, players rostered, but they'll replace somebody um, on your team. So if you have a roster of 22 players and all of a sudden you got to use um, two players, 
it's okay because you probably are not using the two players on your team, obviously. So you're still going to be within those limits. Um, when it says rosters, be sure to keep multiple copies of your team roster. You're going to use rosters and turn them in for tournaments and other events. So make sure that you keep making copies of them and you'll never, I mean, it used to be that you had to call the office and we had to print new rosters for you, but you'll be able to handle that um, by printing up rosters and stuff. So it's kind of just keep copies on hand. Guest players outside of our club, usually a no. Um, for the most part, it's a no. If somebody were trying to attempt it, they would need to get the um, approval of our director. Um, that's the end of that slideshow. So I'm going to exit out of there and I'm going to take you to a checklist. Um, <clears throat> does anyone have any questions at this point? Okay, I'm going to, as soon as I get rid of this slide here, and I'm going to share the screen with you on, Somebody's getting ready to come in for our next meeting. I'll let them in. All right, let's share with you the checklist here. And where did it go? Hold on one second. Is anybody seeing anything on your screen right now? Okay, hold on. I think it is. It went to my other screen. Can you guys see this checklist? Yes. Okay, good. Sorry, I've got two computer screens, so it flipped to my smaller one. I was like, where did everybody go? <laughs> I thought I lost you guys. Um, so the checklist, and let me um, adjust this a second. Um, okay. So this checklist, I'm going to send this out to you, or actually I'll send you a link probably through Playmetrics um, and I'll save it in there. I think Holly might have it saved. This is kind of a walkthrough, um, how it's telling you complete your background check. And this one, uh, unfortunately, uh, hold on, we're gonna stop that. It loaded the wrong one. So give me one second, should have known. I knew there was something not right. So while I'm pulling this up, feel free to ask me anything that you are thinking of or something that we haven't discussed. Um, don't be bashful. Now's your chance to talk. Going back to the numbers, I have, I've asked players and parents to give me numbers. Since we're their tier duo, I need them to be in the 41 to 61 range. So Corey, yes, you, now you are assigning numbers to people. So it's your, it's your decision. Now you could, you could take that designation of numbers and you could send it to your team and say, all right, you guys can pick from here and I'll take the first, you know, first come first serve type thing. You okay. could do that if you choose to do so. Other words, if you want to make it really easy, it just, it's completely up to you. You could sit there and go down your lists and say, here's the numbers and give them to them. And there you go, go get your number. Um, because we don't get the choice of picking what we want. Um, because yeah, we I, I kind of did that, but then um, I didn't know about the range being different. So um, yeah, I'll go ahead and reassign those. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Good question. All right, let me pull up the right checklist. Hey, Renee, and while you're pulling that up, um, Tim Langdon, thanks. Uh, that's just for, I mean, we've got three teams for U11 for boys, and a lot mm -hmm. of the boys are, already have their numbers. And so we've got three teams and, you know, a bunch of new players across the three different teams. And so it's my understanding just the new players then across those three teams will get new numbers, not everyone across that group, correct? Or is that inaccurate? <laughs> You know, yes, because they already have a kit and a uniform coming in 
um, they're coming from 10 to 11. So there's always that exception in there because they're academy and they're coming up into that next group. Hopefully you won't run into too many um, duplicates. If you do, there's easy ways to get it fixed. Um, on the other side of that, at U11 and U12, there's not much that you're doing or attending that's going to cause an issue. So um, you don't have to worry about it. When you start getting up to 13 and above and you're getting into those premier level leagues, then they don't allow duplicates at any point in time. So yes, you would be good to continue down that path. New players will get assigned numbers um, within that <clears throat> within that same numbering convention, um, find one that's open and assign it to them. Sounds good. Um, and uh, plus go into the new kits after another year. So, okay, much appreciated. Yeah, we have another another year of this kit and then next season everybody will be purchasing um, a new kit for the next two year cycle. Good question. So here's the correct team manager checklist. And as I said, I will get this to you. Um, completing the background check, um, that's via player's health. Again, this is only for new people coming in since it's now going to be valid for two years. So if you've already done it, you're good. More instructions will come um, next week from Aaron. Safe sports certification, everyone has to do this every single year, new, returning. Um, the easiest way I tell people to go do this is go to safesport.org. Um, log into your previous account and complete uh, your most recent certification that it's requiring you to do. Um, I think after the three years, I think we have to go back and do it again. Um, so we'll see. I haven't quite done mine yet, so I haven't found out um, what it looks like. Um, but even if you're new, you can sign in through here and create a new account and then follow um, the process. You may need a couple things from me, which are buried. Um, I think they're in that uh, document we just went through. I'll make sure they are before I have Carrie post the presentation um, on the website. Um, you just need a couple codes and then you're good to go. It does take, I'm going to be honest, it does take probably a good 90 minutes or longer to get completed. So make sure you got some free time um, away from the kids and family um, where you can get that completed. Um, have you been added to your Playmetrics team? I think most of you have, or you probably wouldn't have known about this meeting. So um, that's just for people if they need to get added to your team, or maybe you just don't see your team, then you can get with Aaron and we'll get you added on there. You're setting up schedules, games, and team fees and Playmetrics. Playmetrics does allow you to put your team fees in there. And I believe you can, you can collect via Venmo, PayPal. Um, I don't know if there's another one in there. I think those are the two. Um, you can always take checks, cash, however parents want to pay you. It's completely up to you. Um, and you can keep track of all of that stuff out in Playmetrics, so it's very handy. Um, Soccer Master, you guys will be sending out that Soccer Master link for new families to order uniforms or returning families to order pieces that they may need to replace. Um, that link will be sent out to you. Um, hopefully, uh, middle to end of next week, we're going to be working on those in the next two days to get people entered in, um, and then uh, we'll get those sent out to you guys. All you're going to do is send that out to your players, and mostly it's going to be your new players. Um, if a returning family wants one, they'll probably email you and ask for it. So just sending it out to them so that they can go out and order the pieces that they sized for at our sizing events um, and then get their kit. Make sure they do this um, as soon as possible because we want to make sure they have their kits um, before they step out on game day. And if some coach wants to attend an early tournament, they're going to need their gear. Um, getting added to your team roster, this is just going back to background checks and safe sport certifications, concussion certifications, all that has to be done before you can be added to the roster. Um, somebody please, need, please mute. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, meet with your coach again over league registration, tournaments, and all fees. Um, and I just showed you the registration deadline dates. Um, working with the coach to set up the team meeting. We do have an AV room at the Omaha Sports Complex. You're always free to call and set up your team meeting there if you'd like to use it. Um, so get with them. Um, it's, it's a handy thing if you have a team treasure in addition to yourself. So it's not required, it just makes it easier. So if you have somebody that wants to step up as a treasurer to handle the checking, that kind of thing, um, feel free to 
to you know find someone from your team um, and have them work on that financial piece. There are some teams that have both and somebody sets up the account and runs all the payments and fees and the other person just does the communication um, and things of that nature. Totally up to you. Um, getting with your coach to set the team budget. Um, and as I said, you can add that stuff and play metrics. Uh, I think I have treasure in there twice, but that's actually, that's a treasure to collect tournament fees. So they do all your collection and stuff for tournaments. Um, assigning nets and flags. You shouldn't need a net. Um, most of all of our complex now have netted goals. So there really isn't a need to have it. Um, we'll actually be checking in a bunch of them here within the next couple of weeks, getting people to bring back the ones they do have. Flags you will need, you'll need three flags. So you can always assign a parent to handle this outside of yourself. So feel free to, to delegate and have a parent uh, come and pick up um, your flags and we'll give them a notification when it's time or we'll notify you and then you can notify them um, when it's time to come and pick that kind of stuff up from the office. Um, registering for league, that's what we talked about earlier when we went through the dates of the registration date and deadline. Um, call us if you need assistance. Uh, registering for the tournaments, that's where you're going out, whatever the coach has asked you to register for, um, going out there and getting your team registered and set to go. Collecting the medical release forms. So again, when your first team meeting, ask your parents, hey, be sure to bring a copy of that medical release form because you are going to need it um, before they attend events. Um, ECNL RL, e ECNL NPL, U.S. Club medical release forms, make sure that your teams are getting those um, completed and done. In addition to having the USYS forms, you'll need both. And let's see, creating a team binder. Remember I kept referencing a binder. Get a binder together and keep everything there. Your medical release forms, your birth certificates, if you need them um, with our older age groups, um, player passes, rosters, travel permits, anything, your guest player forms, everything just keeps right in there. So you always have it in one place. Sometimes you get a coach that wants to handle the player passes. If he does, fine. Um, that's totally up to them. Um, but outside of that, the majority let the team managers hold on to them just because they don't want one more thing to be responsible for. Um, once the training and league schedules are released, um, you can add those to play metrics. The training uh, schedules will actually be pre-populated, so you won't have to worry about it. You may be getting with your coach to send an email to Carl requesting um, the days and times uh, that you would request for your training sessions. Teams, <coughs> excuse me, most teams are already set and where they will um, practice at, you are just going to be looking at the days and times um, for specifics and sending that. So Carl will be getting on that um, shortly. And then you guys can, um, as I said, when game schedules come out, you can input that into play metrics. That will be your responsibility when game schedules come out. And tournaments, any tournaments, you'll add those in. Um, Nebraska League rosters, make sure that um, this is kind of a thing that we use. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna need a drink here. Um, this is gonna be with the information that comes from the league for NYSL. They'll send out instructions, but the way that we did in the past, you would print out your roster for game day and um, any of your your club pass players, make sure you're getting them assigned and ready to go prior to um, printing off your game day roster because that's what you would take with you um, when you go to game day and present to the referee. Um, learning how to use digital passes. I'm not going to pay too much attention to this right now until we get the rules from um, NYSL on how we're moving forward with um, digital passes, which I think they should still be there. Digital passes for you, the you, you people that are new, that just simply means that you can go on your phone, download a website um, that has access to showing uh, digital player passes uh, for your team. So you can just present it from your phone um, instead of physical passes. So it's best to have your physical passes in your binder all the time, just in case you run into issues with your phone and you can't pull it up. So that's what that's in reference to. And then USYS player passes, again, it's just reiterating, they're good for the entire season. So please keep them um, and don't let them go. 
the one last thing I'm going to mention for the first group so I can get you guys moving along. Um, if any of you guys new that came in need a tutorial walking through Playmetrics, feel free to reach out to us um, at the office. Any one of us there can help you and we can pull up a screen and we can create instant Zoom meetings and we can show you um, in person, you know, just over the Zoom, um, that kind of in-person feature, um, how it works and how you can add stuff and change stuff. It's pretty easy to use. It's pretty user friendly, um, but there'll be times that you're just not quite sure. So as I said, just ask us, give us a call and we'll be glad to walk you through it and show you what to do. Um, lastly, those of you that are on here for older age teams, let's just say you 13 and above. And if you're on ECNL, ECNRL or NPL teams, please be sure, I'm gonna reiterate this. I will put this in the checklist before I send it out. Please be sure that you are accounting for everything in your team fees. Everything means outside of the normal things that you consider tournaments, um, state cup, president's cup, you qualify for regionals, you're going to regionals. All of those events have fees assigned that is a responsibility of the team and they are high dollar amounts. So be sure that you have budgeted that into your team fee. If you are a team that enters in state cup in the fall and you make it to regionals your regional action will not happen until spring so make sure that you are getting all that stuff accounted for so that your families are paying up prior to attending those events if you have questions on any of that obviously call me at the office and i will be happy to give you the information that you need or point you in the right direction so that's my last um, little tidbit there on that. Um, so I leave with, for the first group of people, do you have any questions um, that we did not touch on? Ask away right now. And I apologize, I did not even um, start my screen for some oddball reason. Any questions? From my first group. All right, my first group's all good. Um, as I said, you got any questions after this? Give me a call, send me an email, happy to assist. Thank you for attending and you guys are free. Thank you. Yep, thanks. For those of you who are on for the second one, give me a moment because I am going to pull up the presentation.